Silk is good for Gongbi. You'll have to ask um, Henry how if it's good for this. Yeah, this is because a different. Kind I, I'm, of... I, I honestly, I'm not sure. Are there different types of Gongbi? You oh. know. Well, there are different kinds of tons of sized paper. I mean, there are so many kinds of paper, you know. No, I mean different types of gong bee. Um, yeah, you know, the I way to do gong bee. Oh, oh, oh. No, there's only um, one way to do gong bee painting. The other, right. the other way is the 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 one. Hello, everybody. I'm Susan from Guatemala. And um, I've been studying with Henry for many, many years. But um, Gombi is only one style of painting, actually. Uh -huh. Right. Where do you live in Guatemala? In the city. Wait, which in the one? city Guatemala of Guatemala? City? Oh, OK. I've been yes. to Antigua and Lake Alaman yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, Various and sundry other places. I was down there years ago for a photography workshop, and it was a what? wonderful. A, a photography workshop. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we we a bunch of us went and stayed in Antigua, Guatemala, and well, actually, uh -huh. we traveled to three or four different places and stayed in different uh, hotels. The one in Antigua was wonderful. The, uh, I think they called it um, uh, the- And a chel also. No, uh, uh, the Casa Verde. Uh, it was uh -huh. used to be a nunnery, I believe. It was turned uh, from a nunnery into a um, wonderful, like bed and breakfast on the beautiful hotel, beautiful rooms. They have a Swiss chef there who is excellent. Well, hey. <laughs> and lots of wine and coffee. <laughs> it was one good coffee, that's true. Oh, I buy Guatemalan coffee online because I love it. Starbucks also has sometimes I was there for Day of the Dead and went up to ah. Oh, it was fabulous. I'm going to try the watercolor paper, Joanne. See yeah, yeah. You know what? You should check with them, Henry. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Which, which is better? Uh, I'm I'm ready now. Uh, sorry for a little delay. Uh, I uh, first of all I thank uh, the uh, uh, organizations. Uh, two 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 groups uh, supported this uh, workshop. Uh, Julie, did you introduce the event already? I think I heard something. So uh, um, I thank uh, Portia and Julie for organizing the okay. event. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, Good you, Henry. Hi. <laughs> hello. Hi. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's glad to um, see everybody again. Um, I recognize many of your <laughs> members here. And uh, I do, do have some uh, students who heard of this event in my other class when I mentioned it. So they, uh, I let them join because we do have a few room at the time. But now we are a little bit. Um, you know, more than we expect, but uh, it's good size, I think, still. <clears throat> so we should be able to um, facilitate everybody here. Um, so today we're going to study uh, a style called the uh, Mogu. Mo we, we normally pronounce the first letter Mei, means uh, Meiyo, uh, no. Meiyo. Yeah, may, but in here, the context, we, we pronounce the fourth tone. The Chinese has tones, mo, instead of may, we mo. It's, it's more like Cantonese, mo gu. <laughs> gu means bone. So no bone, boneless in, in English. Boneless. <laughs> boneless. 
it's in between the xie yi, freestyle, spontaneous style, and the gong bi. I heard many of you have uh, uh, mentioned gong bi. So if you are familiar with gong bi, uh, you are really familiar with the um, materials because we use gong bi materials. If you are familiar with the xie yi, the good news is you already know the calligraphy, uh, the spontaneous strokes. So both of you will learn something new and uh, uh, why you, you know, take advantage of what you already uh, know, okay? So Mogu can go um, west towards the watercolor and go east towards Gombi. Oh. Understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Henry, can you can you video? Can you turn on your video? Oh, I don't have a video here. It's on. Oh, okay, let me. You have a pin. Okay, I have two videos. You uh, let me let me turn off. And then I, I'll let you find my my active video. I have another uh, computer in the same name because I use that to uh, admin the the meeting. So uh, let me turn everybody off so you will see the active person. And then you ping my video. So you won't lose my, or I can do this. Um, let's just try this first. So let me mute. I, I have to mute everybody for now, except myself. So. So everybody can see my uh, window, right here. Okay. Um, you can use uh, the yeah, Aries. You did very good. It's very help. When I ask a question, yes or no question, you click on yes or no in the participant window. You can respond with the yes or no button. Okay, you can ask uh, go faster or go slow. You can type in uh, questions with a uh, chat. Let's see, where's the chat? Um, can someone chat and then, oh yeah, I see chat, okay. So I, I will monitor chat if something wrong. Uh, Victoria, uh, if you, it, she's watched monitoring this. Uh, she can also help me if something goes wrong. Okay, so here, here's a uh, painting I did uh, yesterday, if you recall. I did this portion of it, um, just show you the effect of a uh, dripping technique. And I finished it afterwards. And this is the complete painting. Um, the paper we're going to use is called uh, uh, sized paper, um, but for gongbi, you use uh, the shimmering surface, like a uh, sparkling uh, mica. I prefer to use the rough one um, without the mica. If you only have the mica one, you can turn it off, uh, turn it over, use the back side. Uh, you can also use the shigata wing, the same thing, either the front side or the back side. So you, if you don't like the shimmering, but the shimmering doesn't, you know, really make uh, any any uh, difference. Actually, it, it adds it. Uh, let me show you something I did. This one is a Shigata wing. It's on the back side, and uh, uh, this is the orchid. Uh, some of you may have just finished the class with uh, this uh, model, a uh, life model, earlier with Victoria, and uh, this is a Li Wu style. Very high, you know, high spell, uh, stylized orchid. The same orchid you can do with. Uh, what he does is he uses very thin lines for tree trunks and the branches. Why keep the flower in life size? So very stylized, very effective um, way of uh, painting uh, realistic flowers. So Gongbi and uh, uh, Mogu or bonus in common is they all based some, they could use to paint real uh, life flowers 
object. If you use a single shrine and size, you, you should always use the front. I think every, yeah, you, you should always use the front. Uh, so this one is in the front. Sometimes I just make a mistake. I cannot even tell which is which. It's okay then. Uh, this is a, a size paper used on the front side. Uh, the jasmine, I washed the background uh, with the uh, blue, yellow, and the red, a uh, bronze, uh, indigo, and the uh, uh, bamboo. Uh, this is a, another paper, regular size paper, size single shrine. Uh, it's uh, from a live flower, dendrogen and uh, cattleya. Uh, using this uh, boneless style. Boneless means there's no offline, no ink offline. You can still see lines. There's still bone. I'll talk about that, bone stroke. This one I did uh, uh, a study before we do this today. The uh, creep myrtle, creep myrtle. Uh, I did this demo actually in the landscape class, just showing you what we, we will learn this class. I finished it. I did some more study with the uh, Jasmine, we have a live flower actually. And this one I intended to do um, for today. This is a beginning, uh, good beginning uh, project. And this one also a little bit, a bit more complicated than the, uh, the uh, Xie Yi style orchid, right? We do the turnover leaves like that. And this is another version. If you use a semi-sized paper or unsized paper, you might have this kind of effect. It's okay, you know, it has smear. Um, I use overnight ink, <coughs> excuse me. I should get some water before I need it. Sorry. Okay, um, I have a light box and it. maybe it shows you better the texture of the, the, the painting. Can you see it? Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the size of the paper. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, no, I'm sorry, semi-size. So it has some uh, absorbency, Can you see it? Um, it's a little difficult to create the dripping effect like this, you know, the uh or chipping technique, but into where to, to create the hard edge. Uh, but you can still do it on semi size. On unsized, I would do only in the direct approach, just like a regular Xie Yi. I would um, break the two colors on the brush because once it's on the paper, you cannot manipulate it. Click on the thing that looks like a projector. Okay. Am I off the video? Okay. I'm good. Okay. I think that's an old question. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Now we are going to. Um, do something first. Um, I I think it's probably better to start with some basic uh, um, strokes. <laughs> Actually, the most difficult part usually is the um, the leaves, right? For those of you uh, are not so um, skillful with drawing, you you can you can draw a template, and then you can put it underneath the uh, let me draw this first. Okay. okay, so if I draw this composition, you know, 
you, you should concentrate on the shape of the stroke. Don't have to, don't have to be exact, exact, but you know, get get ideas of the this um, two sides of the leaf, for example. So you can you can mark them, code them, you know, like one or two. Uh, you don't have to because this is a Xie Yi, you know, you cannot really duplicate exactly, but just get the the, the idea of the, the layout, maybe something like that. So um, you can use a, 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 a drawing paper to do this or computer paper if this is, if this is <laughs> big enough for you. Um, so then you can put this under it as a template so you can draw like this. So if, if I do this orchid, um, in Mogu style, I need to have a template like like, like, like this. But uh, I think the artist uh, uh, in this book, uh, he didn't use the template because he's a master. Okay, <laughs> after um, a while, you don't need it. But in the beginning, even for Xie Yi artist, you need to have this. Okay. For um, the brush, I will use uh, um, some stiff brush, some soft brush, and some combination brush. If you have only three uh, basics, that, that should do it. You know, um, let's let's see. If I use this uh, one brush, I'll use the combination brush because it's hold more water and you need to have some uh, paper towel. After you soak the brush, adjust the brush. And uh, if you have a brush that was used for calligraphy, be very careful with uh, white flowers or pink flowers. You should have a separate brush for, for them, for the uh, flowers. For leaves, maybe okay. So, um, Let's just use one tone, which is ink, without uh, using color in the beginning, just to show you the concept, okay? So if I use a clean palette, and I just, just use a little bit ink there, as my darks, let's see. And then I, I um, clean the brush, and then I use a, uh, water to dilute it to get a light shape. So we distinguish, distinguish the, the two sides, the back and the front to paint a turn over leaf. Do you remember the Cantonese school or Southern China school, Lingnan school? They always do the opposite <laughs> as the, the uh, uh, literary painting. They would do the leaves from top down, like that. You, you can see the, the, the light, the ink is pretty light because uh, I can always charge it. I can always charge it, yeah. And you can do all the, the uh, light first. And then you can change your brush. I think that would be uh, economical. Instead of wash the brush all the time, I use a stiff brush so you, it makes it uh, uh, easy to recognize which is which, right? So I just use uh, black in this case to do this uh, top part. Sorry, the brush, I didn't wet it. So it's a little split. I should use the basic the basic one here, the basic stiff brush. Let me just use the ink. Okay, so see, I just print the tip of the brush. We call this a uh, fish head, like you how you start an orchid from root in freestyle, right? And then you gradually lift uh, to to a point where it turns, it turns. 
and then uh, reload it. You can reload it with more ink. And then do this top part. You don't have to follow this stroke guide. It's calligraphy. So you might touch a little bit the wet under, under it. It's OK. You can you, you see if it's too large, you have to do it in, in several several uh, to be aware, aware of the, the the tip which is along the left side kind of negative paint you can cut in the first stroke but uh, if it's still wet if you you know you might get smear if you touch it so you can leave a little white space in between let me turn this off so you can see my shade okay I can still see the pencil under it, at my template. See, this is a um, separate tones in different stroke. It's different than you paint um, a, a multiple load, multiple tone uh, on one stroke. So there's, it's not necessary to change tones. Uh, but you can charge it with color. We talk about that later. But you know, to to make this uh, clear, you you need to. We can later use the green and the uh, yellow green to separate the two sides, something like that. If you can see my light shade, I can uh, awaken it. Use the. Uh, um, Some, you know, leaf veins, but you, when you draw these veins, it's very free and casual. Although it looks like a gombi, but uh, it's you know you have to do it uh, without repeating, without uh, hesitation. So that that gives you a free, uh, carefree feel of it. And then you can you can also draw this uh, dark veins with a leaf vein brush, which is a small one. Let me see. Uh, I don't have it handy, but I just use this liner, uh, Jim Bonian, Jim brush, the liner, the mix of a, blue, uh, a soft and a stiff as a liner. It's, it's also good for painting small leaves itself. So you can draw this uh, parallel veins, but you don't have to be too stiff, you know, just a suggestion of that. So this is the basic uh, idea. You can still vary the tone, you know, um, or uh, the, uh, the values. So the, it's not a monotone. You still have, but within the range of dark and within the light, you can still vary them. So basically, this is for the uh, this kind of leaf. And for other tree leaves, let's do that. Uh, for small leaves, later we'll use color, okay? But now we just concentrate on stroke calligraphy. Um, we can use uh, light color to stand for green or yellowish green with a uh, you know red. We can uh, load the, all the colors later. But uh, for leaves, okay, shape we. Very simple. We can let me do a little darker so you can see. On this paper, if you try to do it like you do it with Xie Yi or spontaneous style, you double load it, it won't work. Uh, some for some reason you will you will not keep the gradation. You know, just uh, uh, sometimes it works. So you can still have a little bit vari variation uh, of of tones. Yeah. It's okay. That that's that's the uh, Xie part of it. But uh, basically, this is idea: dark and light separate uh, is the idea. So you can do a small young leaf like that. Um, if you if you have a larger leaf, you do it in in two strokes, uh, like that, or four front view. You. Um, it could be one. The two. See, I indicate 
when I draw this, I always aware the tip of the brush, which leave the paper the last and create a little tip for the leaf to indicate movement, which is very crucial. It actually, if you look at real flowers, they all have this little tiny tip. Um, that's a very um, important detail to keep in mind, just like the tip of the bamboo leaf, you know, is very important. Even we, we, we paint over leaves or different shape of leaves. And someone asked me how to do larger leaves. Uh, we can do three strokes, for example, one, without lifting the brush, go back and then continue to a longer one and go back and then lift the brush with tip. <clears throat> this is this is like a peony, right? It's it's an M M movement. Actually, it goes down, goes up. Like you write an M roughly, okay. And this one is a uh, um, two strokes, both going down from left to to right. Yeah. What about uh, like a chrysanthemum? Chrysanthemum leaves. The same thing with the uh, um, xie or spontaneous style. Okay, watch this. Should I zoom in? So you can see better. But later I may have to zoom out when I need. Uh, I think I, I should have an example here for the chrysanthemum, right? You start from a uh, Top and because if, when you have a gradation, you know, like I load a little lot, uh, a little darker, so you can you can start from top to the bottom, going like a like a ren, uh, left and right slant strokes. Okay. Um, later, I will I will show you how to do even bigger um, leaves like uh, the water. Hibiscus, the tree hibiscus. I don't know what's the name uh, exactly. I, I'll, I'll, in the handout, you can find that. So this is for the front view. Uh, what about a turn over? So you would do a light one, just like the orchid we did. So this is similar to this, but a little, you know, you hold the brush at a slant instead of holding it right, uh, straight. You do it like that. And then uh, you can change the brush or you can use the uh, same brush, <clears throat> but a uh, load darker ink. So let's just, to save time, I just use two brushes like this. I can shift it. So you can, you can draw a little bit to, at the beginning and then the end. So that, that gives you you see, I can repeat uh, on this paper, no problem, no problem. You can, if, you, if you're not good at calligraphy, you can fake it. <laughs> you can draw uh, a stroke and then just fill in. But it will give you, a, um, unless you're a very good forger, <laughs> you can, this is how they do uh, copy calligraphy, you know, and masterpiece, they, they draw the outline, the contour, then they fill in. That, that's okay with this kind of paper, right? Um, so for in that direction, you, you do it uh, either this way or you, you can draw downward. Uh, and then you can, this, this I will consider is like a, a bent over one. You don't really see the side, the other side. This is a, uh, a foreshortened view maybe like they call it in Western terms. You can do that. You can add a little bit. That would be a, 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 a roll over, I mean, turn over leaf. 
and the, the, the something like a um, like this uh, this flower this uh, uh, jasmine. I tried to do this also. Okay, so for smaller ones, or you can do larger ones. I would do the um, magnolia. Okay, so this is the side side uh, view of a uh, ten over, very uh, useful. So you can always manipulate that a little bit. But you see, when I try to just make sure the color goes with the side, the front is darker than the light. Okay. Um, what else do we need to learn before we do the actual painting? Oh, the, the stems. Uh, stems, you need to hold the brush straight. Okay, so you go. Okay, um, a good question would be, do you start from top down or bottom up? Normally, I would uh, start you know, from bottom up. That's my old uh, school my home school, my uh, Shanghai school style, maybe we do that. The way it grows is what uh, we normally do. Even the bamboo, we start from the bottom up. But for Cantonese style, they always do the opposite way. Like, believe me, Zhao Xiang does that all the time. Yeah, Zhao Xiang, the master, Zhao uh, Hong Kong master. Okay, um, they, they always start from the top bone stroke, yeah, bone stroke, because the ink gets lighter. Um, so here, here we start to introduce the, this is just a stroke. And then we, we, within the stroke, you play with the color. You can drop some water to make the center a little um, uh, lighter. Instead of loading the brush, you know, with dark on each side and that kind of thing on, on uh, sized paper. You cannot do that on an, uh, on unsized paper, I'm sorry. On sized paper, you, you have to drop, drip water. You can drop, that's the advantages of it. You can drip water on, on dark to create a, um, to make the, the stain, to avoid the dead stain. See, this is a dead. So before it gets dry, you can, you can drip some uh, color or water, just clean water. I'll show you that. That's a different uh, uh, stage of the development. But in the beginning, if your shape is not um, calligraphic, no matter what I do, it will be a, a mess. So uh, first of all, you concentrate on the shape. Then you can uh, change the color. You can you can drip the you know the drip drip uh, to enhance the. Uh, color the the saturation or something uh, even change the hue okay so this is a bone stroke um, and uh, what else oh for white flowers it's the same as uh, uh, the uh, the xie or gongbi but it's in between so when you draw this kind of line it's more, um, it's thicker than fine line, right? But still, I think we 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 ha probably have learned this kind of stroke. So you start from a, uh, a, a, a uh, nail head. This we call fish head to start. You know, you just uh, like a print with the the brush, right? That's a, some some of the leaves. It's the starting is a it's a uh, is the pressure going from uh, light to heavier. But in, in painting petals like this, big petals, you start with a nail head stroke. Nail head stroke is a different uh, kind of stroke. Um, I think it, here's the one and similar to that, this one. When we do this uh, uh, foreshortened view leaf. So nail head is like a, you put a nail and then you know just continue. That put a dot, a pass, and 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 this at the beginning. Okay, that's a nail head. Um, a, a more uh, complicated leaf. Let me just show you. 
to finish this uh, this uh, page. So if we have a leaf that uh, uh, turns forward like this, let me show you. So we we can do a light ink first with a nail head stroke and the stem. First of all, you just do a, a leaf like that. And then we we do the top with with darker leaf. Don't don't have to be black, but I just want to show you the concept. Okay. So this this is the back side, and then you can then add the top, the front, upside. We call it up and the down side. So this is the this should be a little darker. You can charge it. You know, you can put a vein. Is that clear? And uh, this vein also, you can put uh, with a different color. This should be wine red or something brown. This is a uh, uh, green and a darker green, something like that. <clears throat> so this is the most challenged one. If you could do this one in th different tones, it should be. Uh, if I exaggerate that, exaggerate that. This is a, if you if I outline in Gombe style, it will be something like that, right? Yeah. What about the veins? Okay, for the veins, um, on on Moku style, you you keep it uh, thin, very thin. Especially this artist, different artists may have different signature. This is your signature, uh, so you can create your own style. <clears throat> he does it uh, when it's slightly damp, but you can still fake it if it's you know dried in. Uh, so I would do. First of all, I I want to lighten the ink so it's not so black just darker than than this would be enough for smaller leaves you don't have to do all you just do one maybe it's enough just something like that and you can then uh, if needed you can you can add a little suggestion of a nail head to start the the uh, secondary veins The center one it has a nail 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 head start okay nail head and uh, a tail uh, rat tail right they, they call this in in calligraphy it might be a, a, a problem but no no problem with this and you can you can draw the two sides one by one it, it could be very casual and here. The Li Wu style is uh, he omit he tend to omit the first two. He will start from the the back and then the middle. That's about it. And then just uh, have a little suggestion, like two little dots, just the beginning of that uh, two end stroke. If you put the four one, it will destroy the integrity, the uh, overall uh, feel of it. See, this is a. Uh, a larger leaf like the hibiscus we're going to do and then he his line so fine i have to use a smaller brush i believe and he, he does it very abstract just almost like a uh, straight line but not not perfectly straight i guess but it, it could even overlap between you know two sections totally unrealistic but the overall feel is is still realistic, and I, I sometimes I use a dry wet brush just to, to blend in a little bit, you know, to fake um, to fake it. But you don't have to. If if usually it, it, it uh, if the ink is not dead, because it, it may have some light and the dark itself, you know, it, it, it's okay to blend in with uh, the base, but. Dry and the thin stroke help to do this. This is a Ming style. Actually, he learned from Boyang, uh, same contemporary from uh, uh, Xu Wei, the, the Xu Wei master in, in the same period as uh, Xu Wei. The, Boyang is an artist in Ming dynasty. He does this uh, ink model code, um, um, flowers, 
with a real flower, kind of garden flowers. Um, that's about it. I'm going to do the actual painting next. What time is it? Good. So for, for this one, um, you need to read the, the original first. Uh, when you when you study a painting before you copy it, uh, you should um, figure out the composition. You can use a small piece of paper to draw some um, draw a compositional note, so you know the the flower is positioned, you know, somewhere, and you pay attention on. I know I already made the mistake, but better to make a mistake on your small piece before you. You do the, the the big one, you know. So just uh, you can you can then use uh, uh, ink to modify it to create a black and white copy, you know. Just uh, just draw a layout, the placement of the of the painting, and then think about which comes first. That's the the big question, what comes first, the flower or the leaf or the stems? Sometimes stem, sometimes leaves, sometimes flowers. So it really depends. Okay, so think about that. Um, if you just trace, it doesn't matter, right? But if you don't trace, you just uh, paint my own. So let me do freehandedly. Um, I think most of you don't have the paper I'm using for, you know, unsized paper. So I just use this uh, mulberry paper. So everybody has, to, if you have the uh, size the paper, you can use size the paper. Okay. Let me see. Hmm? Is that I think I misplaced that. Sorry, I misplaced my paper. I can't find it. Um, so I have to use this uh, paper consistently. But you know how uh, the different people will react. So this is the, the uh, uh, mulberry number one. Okay. So I just copy my my own painting here. And maybe uh, you you can you can put put up the original. Let me see if I can do that. I think we don't need that. Okay, you can you can yeah you can open another window with the handout. Okay. And I just copy my my own painting. <clears throat> I've done this many times. So I kind of remember. Uh, I'll use a liner. Rimbonian brush. With a light ink, pretty light. So I can use a piece of paper to test it. Okay, that's about it. You better have a blotting paper in hand. You can use it as for, for testing and blotting as also. <clears throat> so within the flower, I'll start from the front row, the biggest petal here. So. Um, and I, I pay attention to the, the uh, direction of the uh, petals, which is towards the kind of to, to the right. right. Let's see. Can you see it? Let me, let me just focus on my table. Okay, here we go. You can see it. Start from the tip of this, this 
big petal, like a lotus, you might say, right? See, this line is a little too fine. You can you can cheat a little bit. And then I do this uh, uh, right side one. And then the left side. Okay. And then the inner petal. See, I always find the counterbalance you know, maybe uh, one on the left and one right kind of balance it. Um, you don't paint one side and then the other side. I always paint one long, one short, kind of one large, one small, and uh, just to finish that. So, this petal is a little small, so maybe I need another one. Doesn't matter. It's a xieyi, freestyle. So you can from that, and then uh, I can start to do the small one, but I can save this brush also. If you if you're sure, you can just use the for convenience. You can yeah, you can do the small one at, at the same time. So that kind of uh, communicate it with each other a little bit. Uh, so this one will lean slightly to the right, to the le uh, left, even though generally towards the top, right? Right. So. Yeah, very, very light ink. This is a white flower. We 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 have to outline it, but uh, you can see the line. We call it romantic uh, uh, gongbi <laughs> or romantic outline. Uh, long man because it has this kind of uh, free style um, of uh, outline. The variation in pressure more. Actually, gongbi has this too. I'm sure. So I'm going to use uh, some uh, color for the leaves. Use uh, some green and some yellow and some brown. We use traditional, traditional three basic colors: red, red, yellow, and uh, this is chunk yellow. And this is the amber, okay, and the indigo. So this rusty, rusty color, I call it the rusty yellow, is this mixture of the all three, uh, the red, or the, the bronze, the uh, yellow, and the indigo. And you can mute it with some Oh, not yet. The, the ink is for for the top. I try to save that. But you can mute a little bit, uh, you know, if the ink, the color, especially from tube, it's tend to be too, um, we call it too vibrant, or, uh, too much fire, we call it. And you can mute it with the uh, ink. Okay. So I, I try to get enough for, for all the back side leaves. So it's a rusty green, but it's still in the green family. Okay, now I'm going to do this uh, back leaf, just the, the side of it. This is a little more brown, but, brown, but it's okay. Uh, see this one I, I do, I don't turn the brush I just hold the brush same way. So one stroke, two stroke, and then pull it. You can you can have a turn back if you like. It depends. Yeah, you, you can you can then start charging uh, different colors. You know, if you want to make the 
this color, a little, um, a little blue, green. You can, you can, you can, you can. Uh, when you charge color, this here's the tip. You don't want to paint with the tip, with the brush again, because that way you would you would um, destroy the shape, the rhythm of the the uh, calligraphy. You can only charge with dripping talashi komi, and which is the uh, dot 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 dot. Yeah, along the along the the um, edge, but not to the outline. So try to push it. And then um, you can use a clean brush. You need a lot of brush. <laughs> you don't have a brush to clean. Let me see. Let me make a water brush. Try to have a clean brush too. You know, sometimes the brush is kind of dry. You add a little water. So you create the same kind of uh, uh, juicy uh, stroke as, a, as if on the uh, on the absorbent paper, right? Of course, you can you can still change the the shape a little bit, but you know, try to make it look uh, one stroke. Okay, let's do another one. Um, I I tried to do all the backs at one uh, first, but you can also do uh, one dark and one, one uh, light at the same time. That's probably okay. I think the, that's how, let me show you what, 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 that, what that look like. So if I do the two strokes together, I'll hold two brushes, one dark and one, one stiff and then one soft, basic three, uh, two of them. So the, this uh, this brush goes first like that. I can add some charge on, and then this one just add the uh, backside. Okay. <clears throat> you might say, "Oh, it's too dark." You can use the um, another brush with water. Putting some water. That's called Talashikomi. Yeah. And uh, for this large large leaf uh, under it, I, I'm going to modify the composition because this two composition and the paper it looks different. So I'm going to do this large one under it. So remember what we talked about two strokes. One, two. This one just don't be afraid to break the line. I think it, it's a little too dark. What we do, light, right? And then Talashikomi. Talashikomi water. You can add some. Uh, um, Some indigo, and then some water. And some indigo. And some water, just to fake, you know, just to change the, the um, color without uh, changing the shape of the calligraphy. Which is a beautiful combination of uh, um, spontaneous uh, calligraphy and uh, controlled, manipulated, you know, uh, coloring. Right? All right? How 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 do you like that combination? Nice. Right? My brush is getting to the right. Um, so just put some water in the in the middle. Um, soften it will help but you know if you if you have too much this kind of thing it will make it muddy so remember don't do it to more than three um, layers of uh, charging yeah or you know if you keep especially when you 
use the brush to paint it, it will become fuzzy. So just, you know, dripping. Uh, she called me. Uh, she called me. Yeah. Okay. So this one is a little smaller. I noticed the, the parallels. It's okay. And we, we may have to break that. So we, let me do another one. We just add a little color, two strokes, maybe like that. Okay, to finish, here's another branch actually. Um, so we, we start from, uh, you can start to do the branch, but since I have the design in front of me, I can do it any way I want. Okay, so um, go back to this uh, back color again with the yellow, brown, and uh, do this, uh, I should do it a little faster. Otherwise I want to have, do all the things I want. So we just do this. Okay. This is the nail head, I didn't get it. Okay, now the, you should have a, a more, um, decisive kind of stroke in some case to show the calligraphy so sure you you don't you don't care you know just show the fun of it yeah that's the way to go it it should be fast you know fast speed so you get the spontaneity of it. This is the front, yeah. And uh, okay, that's about it. So squeeze out the 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 white. You can you can paint a little darker here to fill in the the space and then squeeze out, cutting the, the shape, you modify the flower shape a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> if it's too dark, blot it with the absorbent uh, shrine or uh, what do you call this uh, shrine? Yeah. Uh, you can you can drop drip a little. Uh, green color, let me see what color we want, or any color you want to change the tone of that. Let's see, we've got this this uh, mineral green here. <clears throat> I just drew a trip a little bit. I think it, it might have some there. So if you touch the, the, the light, what happened is to, you know, you'll see a bleed. So you have to, do some uh, rescue blotting, something like that. Um, it's a good idea that you 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 drip some blue. I'm sorry, that's too dark. Water. The water tends to bleed towards where it's dry, right? So if you stop it with uh, more clean water, it may also do the trick. But uh, it all depends on your experience. When you when you get uh, you know paint long enough on this paper, you will love it. You will love it. You know, it there's a lot of room for rescuing to uh, create an effect. So for the stand uh, for the trunk, we can just use pure ink to start with, and then charge it. Or I can use a little bit of brown and a little ink. Okay, a little ink with brown. So and then I charge it with the uh, uh, more brown or and green. Either. So this this is bone stroke. So I need to make sure the brush is uh, not too wet. I can get some flying white, flying white for wood wood woody stems of magnolia. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay, then uh, continue. I can just use ink directly, I mean, color directly. 
and I did it from uh, bottom up in the beginning, but here I definitely want to go from look at the stop and then just go directly without hesitate. You can you can uh, hold the brush without moving. You know, if you are not sure, you just hold it there. Look look at the, the uh, next stop and then just go there with a. Uh, don't have to be straight, but uh, decisive movement. You know, just uh, will help. Okay, so that's that's the flowers and leaves. Uh, it might be too dark sometimes, so too light, and you can charge with dark. So Talashikumi could be dark into light as, as well as uh, light into dark. But uh, you can sometimes just repeat, not exactly repeat, re reinstate. If the, yeah, just when you add strokes, uh, you can, at a different uh, tone of stroke, just you know, add add to it. No problem. Okay, so next I'm going to do the color. Um, let me clean the brush quickly. It's better to have a sectioned water uh, basin, or you, you can have uh, um, several several containers with uh, uh, different uh, water. <clears throat> you should wash the brush first, and then uh, keep one clean for color, just, you know, your source for blending colors should not be same as the wash, wash tank. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to use some, uh, uh, just this, this uh, yellow with a little brown to mute it, just the, uh, Basically, yellow. You can use the yellow ochre if you got that color. That's what I try to, to get. And I I, I just uh, loaded it with a uh, clean uh, and uh, uh, so I basically just like a shade. You know, we just paint along the shady parts. But in this case, you see, it's not easy to keep the gradation. Uh, so I. Clean the brush and just uh, with dry, not dry damp, but clean brush to push it to the upper side, just like a xie yi gradation wash, you know, graded wash, graded wash. You push, you charge in the in the um, along the the deep. We call it. Uh, the shady part, maybe, yeah. And then you just push it to the light part. And you can charge more with a, a little brown, maybe to the, to the shady part. Okay, and then just draw this. There's a little bit more color here because uh, this is the guess, less uh, common. So you don't have to use white, but uh, you can uh, use white. This is how I do it. I just use white directly from the tube. Uh, someone asked if you can use uh, Martin's uh, uh, correction pipes or is it, you know, other gouache. Yes, you can. Any gouache, water-based, or gesso, you know, anything. Chinese white is, is good. I use 
I use this thing is a acrylic gouache. My daughter used it in, in a design class in leftovers. So I found it very good. So I just dip into that and I um, dilute with a little water. And then I just put on top, on top. And then I, I blend it with a clean brush. Okay. Wet into wet, yeah. <laughs> you can use clean brush to blend in. So it's light in the middle. So don't do a flat wash, you know, flat wash is boring in any case. So you just use water to make it uh, um, juicy. All right, otherwise it, it tend to be too dry. Okay, <clears throat> let's see, it's time to do the veins. <coughs> the veins are kind of, you can use color, you know, you can use red, yellow, green, uh, red, yellow, blue to get uh, that kind of, you can also just add ink to it to get the, you, you have to use darker color than the base, but not to, to be pure dark. This is still wet. So let's do this back one first. You can you can feel it if it's still wet, just wait. It's a time, you know, no, no hurry. So uh, I still have, yeah, I can start for, with another painting while we wait, why don't we do that? No, let me drop some uh, mask dots here. There's a rhythm between, you know, like a distance, changing uh, the distance. Some, oh, I forgot to charge the color. I just put the color in the brush. Uh, if you did uh, the color, you know, color less, then you can you can charge it with the brown. When it's still wet, but now it's, you can, yeah, just paint over it. What you also do, just glaze it, glaze it. Yeah, you can glaze it and then you can, still charge when it's still wet, you know, some green, some just a little green at the joint where the sprouts is, you know, uh, just would make a little variation to please the eye. It'll be fine. Just don't overdo it, just a little bit, a tiny little. I think you put a little green on the mustards and then that's probably not so authentic, but uh, it's okay. Um, Let's wait a little bit to do the, the calyx stamen. All right. Um, is there a bot? Yeah, that's a good time to do that. <clears throat> I have identified this bug in our garden. I don't know what's the name. Anybody knows that? It's like a pedo a flying like a moth. It's, it stink when you, when you catch it. I know you, you, you know that it's in the garden. Okay. So I just use brown and uh, maybe a little root. I don't have root, I just use rose. Any, any red, we'll, we'll, we'll add a red to it. Okay. And then the, some ink to the, the head just a triangular shape. And then the, the, the uh, large heart cover on the wings, the outer wings, I just call that. I don't know what's exactly the name for that. When, when they close, you will see that. And then the, the back, uh, the back of it, actually I have a picture of this bug. Uh, did I have, yeah, I think I, I took a picture. Let me see. Yeah, 
it's on my, they stay on my vandas. When I water them, they, they, they swimming in the, in the water. So that's when I took the picture with the wing open, perfect for my uh, model. Here we go. I got a prey mantis. I got this one, yes. Can you see, can you see it? Haha, -ha. can you see it? Can you see? Yeah, the direction is pointing up now. I, I think you can turn it to upside down. That's what uh, I'm doing. Yeah, similar to this. See the head? Can you identify this bug? <laughs> it's beautiful in the painting though. Um, let's see, I have a, uh, that's a green mantis. Yeah, we have lots of bugs in the, in the garden. Mantis. Okay. Oops, I lost it. Anyway. Okay, here we go. And I use a tiny little detail brush for this. Or you can use a, just a small visual brush would do that with uh, the basic three. This is the time to do that. <laughs> so I'll use a, a small visual brush. It's pointed. Small, um, basic small brush. And then to do some, some legs and then to I and there's some patterns on the back. Uh, you can outline. I I, I think the, the the artist did some Tarashi Komi there actually. He would do uh, some you know one color and then before it's dry. I'm I'm still learning this. He would drip a little thing with the water or just to, you know to make it uh, um, juicy. And then we use. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Yellow to to do the the inner wings. And then drop a little red near the the uh, up the, the top the shoulder. And you can then draw some uh, uh, lines later when it's dry. So that's about it. You can you can blend a little bit more. I think it should be more orange color, not yellow. So I blend it with a dryer clean brush. Just blend it. So you blend the color on the paper when you need the orange, yellow, then red become orange. Yeah, that's that's how it is. So I just use this this brush, this little um, little my uh, basic three brush, uh, basic uh, what is it called the basic uh, uh, weasel brush, small bit weasel brush, to do this uh, veins. We should do it when the when the it's I think ninety percent dry maybe, with a little moisture is fine but not bleed. Um, okay, so just do this one time. So we have class till one o'clock. We have plenty of time. This is a brown, brownish um, wine color. Sometimes it burgundy you know could be any anything for this uh i forgot the nail head should be on the top uh, on the bottom 
but you can sometimes you know it's okay to draw the nail head on top it doesn't matter you just show your your carefree you know this sometimes it's okay you're the artist and you just your signature you try to to do it like your signature on the credit card you know like uh, how you sign your, your statement your your receipt just do you know it's just the veins but very thin it will not interfere with the original uh, stroke if you paint it too dark it would you would change it so i just keep it thing and it goes round to, to forward not backward remember we did the the, the did the study you could turn the paper to the comfortable um, position to do it see i draw one side first so you can it's continuing you know, like a one two circling like a two half circles um this is a nice tarashi komi effect i like so you got to have the dark and then drift drift color and water something like that on this lighter one you need to to use a little more water so be careful to match the value of the line the veins with the base not always use dark dark dead dark dead 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 uh, tone use different tones and different uh, just suggestion okay also on this tender leaves you don't always see the middle one especially on this side view just do the secondary veins but this one you may see it don't worry about how many strokes on the original when you copy this kind of thing you know you just have to concentrate on your own if you have room you do more if you don't have room do less you know if you need a stroke just make it up no matter the original so yours will look original and even better sometimes than the original so in the Chinese culture, a good copy is equal value to, you know, to the original. Because in the past, people don't have uh, copy machines, books. They have relied on this uh, trans to transmit the tradition. So copy is very important part of the training. And you can learn a lot by just study the original to learn the positioning, the composition, the steps. Uh, and the strokes. So it's like a rehearse, rehearse in your mind before you do it. Um, while you look at the original, just think about, you know, the the uh, process that was created. So now I need to fix the <coughs> the the uh, pistol. Right? Uh, it's a greenish. Um, like a pineapple, <laughs> pineapple, you know, just a lot of, uh, just two stroke, two bony bone strokes to, to do this little shapes from top down, more solid on the top, on, the, on top. And you can then color it with a little green. I use brown ink and little blue, you know, it doesn't matter, just uh, darker than the base. Then I use a uh, uh, yellow, and the brown, you can use vermilion, I think. It's um, orange color. I think. Yeah, that's, that's it. Just a little yellow, a uh, little um, amber with yellow to dot the pollen near the, the bottom. It's, it's uh, the original flower may look more prominent, but uh, we don't really emphasize on this, just a suggestion of the, something there. And I, I can color the uh, pistol a little bit uh, with green later after it dries. 
So that's it. I'm going to sign it and uh, I'll show you how to sign it. Um, yeah, when you appreciate the original, you always uh, read the poem, the title to get the mood first. Uh, this says, Yu Xiang Ru Meng, the um, subtle fragrance uh, entering dream, my dream. You know, like in Chinese, we, we omit my. Uh, just Yu Xiang Ru Meng, the fragrance, the subtle fragrance, it's uh, Yu Xiang means. Um, very light, not as uh, strong as jasmine. Yu Xiang Ru Meng. Yu Xiang Fragrant Ru. This is different uh, direction as the Ren. Enter. Um, Meng. Meng means the dream. Okay, and uh, this is the title. Uh, you can put uh, Fang or um, Ling. It's easy either way. Fang means uh, to mimic. If it's more uh, dear copy, you can say Ling, just like you copy in calligraphy, um, Ling. That's a different character, but I just use Fang because I didn't really put the original in front of me. I copy my own copy, 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 copy. Li Ye Wu, Li, my same part, last name, Ye Wu means a studio, a house, from Ye Wu, mimic Li Ye Wu, and then the year of a rat, you can use uh, uh, 2020 if you like, but we just use this, uh, and I put a season, uh, Q, or still in summer? Okay, forget about it. Sometimes uh, simple, yeah, just keep it simple. Just a year. Okay, and my name is Xiao Hui. Okay, now the seal. I put a seal there. My last name is Li. Sure, the orientation is correct. Let's put under the first name that completes it. So I, I, my my inscription is the same style as the original, which is similar to my own teacher. So we keep it small. Um, okay, that's the first painting. So I'm going to do. Next, how how is it going? You have everybody. Let me open discussion. Just take a five mi minutes. Okay. Any questions? You, let me see. You can. Uh, you can. You can. Okay. Now you can unmute yourself. Daisy. Ah, uh, no, I, 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 I think I just noticed how, how free his veins are. He doesn't even attach to the main vein. It's, it's just such a free stroke. And the, it has a head on it, just like the head of the pedal stroke. Mm -hmm. it, it just, I wasn't really yeah. going to do anything. Yeah. On. yeah, that's good observation. Thank you for pointing that out. Nice. Yeah. Can you go over the calligraphy again? Oh, my calligraphy on the on the yeah. Side? Okay, let me. Oh, you mean you want me to write it again? No, just the, um, translate. Oh, like translation. Yeah. Okay. Um, Can you close the moth window. You've got the moth picture blocking your screen. Let me see. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. Thank you. Let me turn this off. Let me just turn this off. Okay, now you can see it. Yeah. Um, you means that um, 
means uh, remote, um, mysterious, mysterious. Xiang um, means uh, scent, fragrant. Yu Xiang means uh, secret uh, sec uh, or, or uh, uh, mysterious uh, fragrance or subtle, subtle fragrance. Sort of fragrance. Ru means uh, enter, entering, dream. That's his title. Four characters. Yu Xiang Ru Meng. Okay, let me give you a close up. Oh, I can zoom. I forgot this is the advanced camera. I can zoom. But remind me if I lose the view, sometimes I have to zoom out. I forgot to zoom out. Can you spell entering? Lu is it Lu or you? The word for entering. How do oh, you my pronunciation, my, my, <laughs> my dialect can distinguish the R and the L. Is it R? R, are you? Are you, yeah. My, my Mandarin is bad, I, I cannot distinguish the <laughs> L and R. And Meng, M-U-N-G, Meng? <laughs> anyway, dream? Ru, Meng, yeah. Ru, Meng. Ru, Meng, yeah. Meng, it has the G, um, uh, Ru, Meng. Yu, Xiang, Ru, Meng. Ru, Meng, got it. On this paper, it seems to be possible to enlarge the leaves once you've already painted them, although I know that is not the right thing to do. However, yeah, you, you can do that uh, definitely if you need it. Yeah. If you realize there's something wrong, you can yeah. change the shape before it gets dry. Yeah, uh -huh. someone even uh, draw the outline with line and then fill in. But try to fill in the color with the. Uh, I'll, I'll show you in the next painting. Okay, we, we basically explore the same technique uh, over and over again. Okay, in different uh, paintings. So should I do another leafy flower than the uh, creep, creep myrtle? And you want to do the taller one. We have another uh, project. I, I It was requested uh, by Su Susan. Susan, are you there? Susan, uh, not Susan Mary, Susan. What Susan? Me? Lisa, no. Lisa, Lisa Curry, right? Lisa, Lisa, oh. yeah. Lisa asked me to do um, this uh, this one. I sent you the copy in color. I I don't. I only have a black and white copy here. It's kind of complicated, so I will I will do a simpler version, but kind of simplify this one. Let me see. Because there are too many leaves, you got lost very easily. I tried two times. Let me show you what I got. Can I try more times? Yeah, I practiced uh, yesterday on semi sized yes. paper, which is the freestyle. You can see this is my freestyle version. Okay. Um, again, we need to read the poem before we. we we understand, so we understand the mood. It says, Meiren Juan Juan, Ge Chiu, Ge Chiu Shui. Meiren means the beautiful lady. Uh, Juan Juan is the uh, manner, like a ripple of water, uh, or gentle movement. Uh, Ge means uh, across, autumn water, Ge Chiu Shui. Meiren Juan Juan, Ge Chiu Shui. It's uh, you, you, Chiusui is also uh, another name for eyes, I think. So you, you gaze at a, uh, a beauty, beautiful flower with, with water in between, autumn water in between, very peaceful, Juan Juan means ripples, uh, peaceful water. Okay, that's the mood. So it's very blurry, misty, misty painting. Uh, I tried to do this uh, on, on this paper. Um, I, I washed the background with uh, a, a yellow 
kind of you know uh, some some like old old uh, antique color. Um, yeah, trying to keep it to faded. You know, that's the I, I I should do better today. So believe me. <laughs> but I won't repeat this one. Let me see. Can can we change? I'll I'll do the change on the fly. So uh, just based on this compositions and uh, modify it to just make it simpler. Let's see. Um, you can draw the guidelines, you know, the leaves, but I, I'll show you what he, he did maybe uh, without uh, planning ahead. But you have to have the complete image or the, uh, the uh, idea comes first always, right? Can you see my t my color blending area? I think that's... No. Black and white. Okay, now you can see everything, but it's smaller. It's okay. Um, so I will start from the the yellow flowers uh, on top. So there are about three 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 levels of. Uh, uh, horizontal groups. Um, you can count them, you know, before you do just like one of the, uh, there's five, maybe four on the first row. Yeah. And then second row is three, then the, you know, another four on the bottom. So basically you group them like uh, into three rows and then you do each row in different uh, um, uh, steps. So I, 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 I would do um, just the one stamp. So let's keep the left one. And then we will reduce the number by half to keep it simple. Okay, go. One. That's for there. Let me see. One, two, three, four, maybe five. Remember what we did, uh, how we did the, the uh, leaf study in the beginning? Uh, you just repeat this M movement, you know, but you need to keep a general idea of where the, the tip pointing to. So this, this tip pointing to the left, right? And there's a, um, a void shape on top. That's basically what this plan looked like. So this is a, a kind of hibiscus, it's, we, we call it a water. Uh, here, I, I try to fake it see, I, I can enlarge it. I can make the, I can change the shape. I uh, basically, I start with calligraphy, but I can still modify it, you know. You can draw the contour with this color and then you fill in the blank. But uh, remember the dark is along the side, which is uh, more definite. So to give you more definition, and uh, um, I use I will use the like another brush with water, um, and then maybe a little green and and brown, just a different uh, kind of. Let's see. In this case, I think it's the tender leaves, so it will be brown. Uh, start Tarashi Kumi tripping. <laughs> Instead of drawing, you know, hard lines, I, I just dipping in and I use this, uh, um, I think it starts to bleed. You can see that. So my dot become uh, blob, like, like a little um, shapes, not, not uh, you see, if, if the color is too pure, it's kind of unnatural. So. And don't paint, you know, I just, this way you don't destroy the, the chi of the calligraphy, right? So maybe another, oh, this is a white. There's no white there. I think I, I need maybe a little green, just red. Uh, we got red, yellow, and blue, uh, everything. It's very subtle variation. So some, some a little bit of green in there will help. I, I have a little little um, bronze, maybe on, along the top. 
Turn on the edge, it's just like this. Let me mute you guys so we don't hear any private sound. That wrecked it. Oh well. Okay. You don't have to look at the original. You just concentrate on the, uh, just make the shape, uh, you know, variation of lines. And then I will do uh, another, uh, you know, just to show you the main leaves, I'll do another one, which is a, 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 a different tone base. It will be, uh, let's say, indigos. So you don't have to paint all the variations, just paint indigo. You can you can mute it with a little bit of other colors, but basically just one one single light color to do. So I have this one right under it, kind of, um, we call this, uh, what's the game? The pieces together, the, uh, I just forgot that term. Just uh, leave a white, if you touch it, it's okay. You know, it was just bleeding. It, it, you could, you could uh, clean it up. You can just leave it. Sometimes you, you just leave it. Um, so pay attention to the movement of the leaf. Okay. And you can still keep the, the stroke sense, but you can just do watercolor approach. You know, I, I understand you, you familiar with watercolor, you, you feel it's like more like a watercolor. Just do that. And now I change, modify, I realize this is too small. I change the tip. It's all okay, just, you know, copy the original, but keep an eye on the rhythm of your own painting. So you don't, uh, um, lose the, the rhythm of your own. So this is a, a one tone. I, I will charge water a little bit later. Uh, and just, we can do another one with a, a little brown, uh, a little more brown but, uh, on this side. So I can do it in, in, uh, with a little, this is third layer. This is third layer actually. Third uh, horizontal row not layer, rule, right? Okay, so this one is, uh, you can consider each section as a uh, two stroke like that, this is go. And you can, you can do all the, I think here is very subtle. So you have to avoid contact with the previous one, then continue. And uh, try to have some calligraphy Calligraphy always uh, create a chi, the energy, you know. If you if you just use uh, uh, little by little, you won't get this uh, feel of the uh, calligraphy. <laughs> okay. And so one, two, three, three layers di slightly different. This is more brown. So let me charge it now. Uh, you can use uh, one color brush, one. Um, I just use any brush just for the water part. So I will charge the, just like we did here, we, we charge something uh, in, to make it interesting. So we can, we can use a little red. We can use a little red on this part. See, if it's too much, you got a puddle of water, so you, you, you use this clean brush to maybe take it out a little bit. And this is too thin, it should be a little thicker than, than that. So let me just get some more purplish color. Uh, let's do something on this side. So red, blue, and uh, yellow. Do we need yellow? Or we can just use uh, some mineral color 
to make it thicker, I can make a little yellowish on this side. Yeah, just vary a little bit. I try to put the charge along the edge. So you will create the hard um, line, seam line. I call it seam line to create an illusion like a fine line. So water in the in the middle is fine. Yeah. But if you drip too much, it becomes like a dew. That's okay, you know. Too much water will make it like a like a dews. Um, so this one already have all the variations, not much needed. So we just uh, add a little brown maybe, and uh, some water to. Yeah, I I I try not to use the strokes, just the dripping, just the dabbing, on wet, and then just water to lead it to blend it a little further. You know, just you can add water first if it's too dry, and then drip it. No water. Okay, water it if it's too too dry. Just the water and uh, blend it. In. Yeah, you know when you start painting, blend use the tip of the joint. It creates a, a a shape within the shape. Instead of you know just the charging, you're creating some multiple shapes. That's not good. So try not to create more strokes than this. Uh, I got some pattern, which probably fine with this old leaf, you know, something like that. So I got two layers, uh, yeah, just a grid, you know, from a uh, yellow to bronze, bronzy, <laughs> brown, uh, brown, green, uh, brown, brown, blue, blue in the middle. So this is probably, that's okay, it's a nice color. So I'm going to repeat a few more times just to, uh, to finish this painting. So you can concentrate on all this small first, and then you know you can do uh, this time. Let me do this. It's, it's isolated leaf, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but this color, I think it's uh, in between those two, maybe. Yeah, it's a transitional. So you can you can just pull pull the brush back using the natural tip of the brush to do the tip, just like that. It's, it's easier, yeah, you know, like 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 that. And then this one is a side stroke. So at this point, I I'm more concentrated on the stroke, on the shape, and the you know to paint the whole shape. You can do it with water if you will, and then you you put the color in. That's the idea. Okay, now I do this. This is tiny baby. I got some red in it, which is good. Okay, that's one section. This it's almost like maple, right? Maple shape. Yeah, and. Uh, just to finish, this one has a, uh, actually it was, a, yes, I'm not sure. You know, here's the choice. I, I, I know the original has the overlapping, create more depth, which is nice, but the, I don't have, let me see if I can do that. Let me extend that tip, which belongs to this first layer. Okay, then I will use uh, some uh, grayish color behind to do another leaf, which is lighter on, on the back. So you create some overlapping, always good to, to have created some depth, you know. So you don't have to keep the white on all sides. The up is fine, already separated. I, I merged this, this lower part, which is fine, you know. <laughs> You don't have to keep all sides with this white water line. That's that's okay, perfectly okay. And then let's do this uh, uh, side one with uh, just uh, pure indigo to start with. Um, I have to do this faster, otherwise it will dry. Okay, 
So what we got? This should be here. So this one. It's a little linked to the to the other side. It has deep deep uh, cuts. It's like side view maybe. So the, the shape varies with each each individual leaf. Right? This one's a nice green. Okay. Now let's charge it with different uh, just vary it with a little bit uh, uh, tender like orange you know i just add a little uh, actually it's become brown it's okay brown is always a nice gray to have gray is actually good to have to mute the otherwise too um yeah too 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 much uh, uh saturation you know just uh, oh i i forgot my rule don't paint Dab, 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 and then clean water to pour it. Don't pour it. Dab, dab, dab with clean water. Clean water dripping. Tarashikomi. Tarashikomi. Yeah. Tarashikomi means dripping. Dripping. Dripping is different verb, right? Than painting. So you drip with with this wet brush. Just create this kind of highlight yeah it's highlight almost like uh yeah just drip water you can do the same thing so drip water or later we can drip uh, uh, white so you can just put in water that created what they call blossom in watercolor right blossom is a good thing in a good you see the original has blossom if you look at that that's how it gets you just put in in the title it says chosui Chosui could be uh, rain or dew or the river water. It's just, you know, water in general in this painting has a lot of water. So this give you a feel of Chosui as long as you, you, you create the, the feel of water. Dripping technique. Yeah, that's a very nice Tarashikomi. See that? Okay. Um, but only, we only have one tone, which is uh, boring. So we need to, to have some red in the. Uh, maybe some, some green. Some yellow in the in the light area, maybe and that's it. Okay, now I I'll finish by doing uh, this last layer, uh, which should be a little drier, and the you know the leaves gets older. So we use uh, more brown. Or we can start from the brown, then we charge it with uh, with more. Um, other colors too. But that's too radical. I think I'll, I'll just use a blend. Okay, let me see. This one has a different uh, uh, gesture than the others. See this does this way, very calligraphic. Without lifting the brush, just do the others two strokes. Yeah. So you got the gradation. Uh, color change naturally from the uh, just like uh, you, you 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 use uh, on uh, on ansize paper, you know you can get the same kind of effect with a double or multiple loading. Just let it blend on the paper, not on the on the um, palette. So we will leave some uh, leaves for uh, we have to do stand first before we do the leaves. Right? So that's that's about it. Do we need this one? I don't think so. Let me see. Maybe we need a little bit on this side. Instead of doing the stems. Uh, so you need to see where the tightest part of the composition. Uh, this part is very dense. And the here is, we can do a little small one, maybe on this side. Oops, 
too dark. Too dark. Okay. Let's go horizontal. Yeah. All right. I, I, when I start to use my my uh, uh, rational brand, I, I tend to lose the spontaneity. So just keep uh, doing fast. Maybe it's good when you have start time to think. You tend to overdoing things. Um, so this this time I'm going to do the the uh, uh, stand with a little ink and the, and uh, uh, amber to mute it. Then we will do green charge uh, charge with green to create the the edge or the highlight in the middle. So this is a pretty wordy part, right? Let's see, where's the top of this stroke? Here, right here. So I, I, I'll measure where to start. It's about this place. It's quite straight down. Bone stroke, so just all the way down, all the way. You can, you can make a little bit turn, but not too much. There's another one, maybe guest one, I don't know. Hmm. I think it might be complicated, but this one can only take the flower on this side. So we have to, I think we are on here. We have to do this. So let's just make it crossing from here. I think that will do it created more diagonal movement. So let's do some of the, the branch long stands for the flowers. Just uh, like that. Um, they probably come after some of the, but I think this comes first, I can see that. So this flower is very important which is a, a poetic one, the falling flowers pointing. So it has all the different stage of, of the blooming. There's the three main ones. Maybe there's a little one on that side. Anyway, so that's about it. And uh, let me charge the um, stem before it gets too dry. So just drip some, uh, some green to it. You may you may make a continuous dot would look like a line, but uh, not not repeated the line. Um, it's too dry, so it, it, it does not move. So I just put more water to it. to in the center of the stroke, in the center of the stroke. It should be in this, in, within the stroke. Don't pen outside, I made a mistake there. So I would have to put a mass dots to hide it, I think. It's not mass dots. It should be dripped into the center of the stroke. No, no matter how thin it is, you, you just drip it into the center of the stroke. So it, it will form a hard edge, hopefully. And sometimes I just glaze it. I just glaze it. And then I just use water to push the color to the sides, something like that. Yeah, I think it's a lesson that you don't want to put a, that's outside the stroke. Otherwise, you will have a funny look. Maybe look like a pine tree with knots, knots or something like that. It's not like that. So this is my my uh, Talashikumi stem. Okay, basically. Um, um, 
do I do the calyx first? Yes, I think so. Because uh, once it's wet, I cannot do this part. So let me do this uh, calyx with the yellow, uh, amber, and some, uh, some green, and some red. Yeah, that's it. And they, they have some, um, it's like triangular shape, right? Um, this one is a flower. So like three, just be free, just be free. More like, it's a hibiscus, yeah, hibiscus. Just like that. Okay, then. We may not have enough time to do the critique, but um, if you have questions, you are welcome to ask uh, in class. And can you just raise the uh, the painting in front of you to show me so I can help later. Okay. Um, you can also post it to the online class if you already joined. And I do have a uh, discussion forum after the class, so you can still do that. So we have one hour, it should be enough, maybe. I have another painting to do. This is a special request by Lisa. Thank Lisa for the request. It's a very challenging one. I realize it's not the easiest, <laughs> but it's good to, to, uh, to learn. If you can do this, the other small ones, it should be fine. Um, so this is the the calyx. I can do, I can you know do this uh, little um, details like a, um, highlights accents later. So now I'm going to work on the the flowers. I need to have a clean brush again. Okay. Just clean this. When I clean the brush, I I um, Kind of, I don't swing in the water. I I push to the bottom of the um, container like this, and then I do this. So you don't like. So this will clean will squeeze out what's in the brush easily. Okay. Now I use uh, just the. Um, pink. We, I got rose. You can use uh, carmine with a little maybe green, or you can use a uh, rouge lighted um, to blend with a uh, carmine. Okay, now uh, I have to do this stroke it's similar to the leaf. I think we didn't talk about it. Let's talk about that first. I think it's important. How do you do round strokes? Like a plum blossom? Okay, here's the, the, the position. You hold it straight and you point to the, tip, to the bottom of the stem and just do a circle. You can do it in two sides. So your brush pointing to the center, and then just kind of you draw. Uh, you can draw a cross white circle like that. Yeah, this is how. So you hide the tip. You cannot do it like like this, right? To make it round. If your if your tip on top, it's kind of difficult. Um, you can still do it. Let's try. I think. This artist may have the tip on top, just uh, but you know with this is this kind of rounded stroke, it's better to use. It depends on if it's a, like a, here is one. It's a very hard edge. This definitely with the tip, so you can you can go back and forth. This is how he do it. I think I I, I got an idea. So he he probably do this one first, like. A, just like that, and then the other way. So soft on the on the bottom, and the you know soft, hard, 
not <laughs> just it's a combination of hard and soft. I just figured it out now. So you can do two hard ones on this one to see how it works, but I don't think so. I will do the hard one. I, I do the hard one, a small one like that. And I just turn to the bottom to give me a soft one. It's there. And uh, soft with bottom smooshy brush. They call it smooshy, right? Some artist. Actually, there's a bot, uh, there's a bot, uh, pedal in front of this. It's like horizontal. So we just do a little bit, I think, make it even more uh, horizontal than the original. It's okay. I have the horizontal stroke like that. Okay. And then I continue with another flower which is the guest, I don't mind, but I do want to identify one at least clear pedal and uh, just uh, the rest is in the mist. Remember this is a misty, misty flower. I remember one day we did a lotus flower with you, your group in the botanic garden with a similar Poem is uh, you know someone um, says the lotus is not clear uh, because lotus uh, is uh, sounds like a love um, yeah. date or love yeah so this is probably also you know similar to that something blurry ambiguous it's good. Uh, we can add some uh, uh, accent later. Let me try a little bit. So just do the shape, uh, the general shape first. And there are some, uh, I'll do the large flowers first. And then the part. Okay, here's overlapping one. Yeah, that's in the front and the back. Something in the middle. I use the whole brush to a soft edge and the hard edge. So my um, pedal is darker, goes behind this. Leave a little, little line there. This one behind. Darker. And uh, that's about it. I don't have any. Oh, there should be another one, but I'll add the calyx later. Yeah, the calyx is behind this. So you, you have to go back and forth sometimes. Gonna get this complicated. This is very challenge. Tell you, I, I probably haven't done this before because of the challenge. Most of the painting I've done before, but may, maybe not this one. I think it's daunting. Okay. Um, this calyx have some behind this branch, so like that. And then uh, it connects to this, uh, have to connect to this point. Yeah, that's okay. So you have to make clear where it, this painting is it's almost like Gombe, you know, you have to make clear where uh, they come from, you know. Okay, I forgot to give some accent on, the, on this part. So you have to do it before it gets too dry. So I, I'll use a little darker green or, or brownish, just give it some accent. Um, you can still use uh, green. And, you know, every time I do a shape and then I use, uh, use water to get that kind of a, um, touch coming effect, that's how you do it. You just drip some water into it to get the outline, the stain. 
just the water. This kind of shape, like hibiscus, you know, that kind of thing. You just add the water. Add water to that. Okay. Oops. Too dark, doesn't matter. You you always got light after uh, from dark. You know, you can blot it, you can drip water, you can um, it dry light here too. Okay. So that's um oh, it, it might have this uh, kind of split line on top. That 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 kind of uh, we usually just do X, but I think it, he did. Uh, yeah, so just like where light color, just like the split of the, the petals. There's only a couple, not too many unopened flowers. Okay. Uh, you can add some more, I think. Okay, behind that. And I always put some water right away. That's why I hold the brush in one hand, you know, Otherwise, I forgot. It's just too dry, so you will not create that kind of juicy, juiciness um, the, with the whole painting. It's juicy water. Okay, so I have to do variations on this one. I remember, I need to use some uh, purplish. I add indigo to this uh, remaining uh, rose color to, to dot the center of it. And uh, that's a guest. So just a little bit. This is a pretty much like a xie yi. Oops, that's too green, I think. But that's okay. It could, it could have some for that stem. See. And uh, pistol is a uh, brown. It could be purple, whatever. It's just darker than this. Oh, before that, I need to use a white um, characteristic for Cantonese school of painting. They use white into into the pink. So the pink is get not um, by blending them, but mix on the paper. Let me let me show you details here. So it's almost dry. It's kind of dry here with air conditioning on parallel, but uh, leave some uh, space in between uh, to create some kind of uh, uh, stripes. But not so careless. It's careless, spontaneous. So just like that. Uh, actually, we can have a little, a little bit of uh, pink to highlight this top a little bit. Just uh, vary a little bit to to echo that dark head. You know, the dark top. We need to have some some darkness in the shady part also maybe okay that's about it and uh, sometimes it's so um so bleeding you know it becomes just a, like a like a uh, block block of white it's, it's okay so this is even subtler just just more diluted it become more diluted because the the water uh, and the bottom diluted so just continue with that and this one i can add a little little dark also i just added some uh, pink to it and become white you know, just finish all and then i can add a little more the, um, pink to it just same brush with white and the white would prevent it from bleeding. Sometimes it's good to have and it's just randomly carefully 
draw this, not like Gombi, but uh, with a similar e effect like Gombi, it has lines. Okay, and I would dot the the point and the the uh, helix. I mean the pistol of the dry a little bit. And the, this time, this is a good time to do the wings. This is very challenging. It's probably the most difficult part of this painting is the wings. Uh, it's just so calligraphic, you know. It's uh, very. The key is to make it very thin, so you don't. Um, make it too noticeable and very light almost like uh, this just you know same color a little bit lighter a little, a little, a little bit di darker than the original look uh, look at the value contrast on this one you almost don't see it right that's how dark it is so just let's see i would do this one first uh, just to test it and just use the rest of the uh, pink to make it even lighter yeah, another thing is you can change the hue so it would it will show uh, even you know with the same value with a different hue like a bronze uh, or brown or, or purple and this so uh, three main and then some still you know you have to do a nail head and then very strong very bony stroke to make the leaf uh, look like a um, mess or what do you call the the, the, the texture indicated the texture of that and the side side uh, wings are very 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 thin it, it's very random you, you just like sometimes just crossing with the, each other is fine you know like an x uh, crossing is fine but it, you create a texture of it that's the key it's very thin, very thin, like a hair thin, hair thin, but with a hair, uh, nail head to start. See, this is too bleed. That's too wet. You cannot do it. So you have to do it on, yeah, this is water. You can see the reflection is, don't, uh, don't do it on, on the um, uh, wet surface. It's okay with the uh, unsized paper, but not with uh, this kind of, let me just make it up a little bit. Okay. I have to wait on this one. And this is dry. So this one is okay. Let me do it with it a little brown. This one. Yeah, I think it's okay to use dry brush, but not, um, not to uh, repeat. You can do slower with dry brush on some damp surface, partially wet surface. The angle of this side is pretty um, large. So it's almost like, a, so that makes it, to, you know, to make this large leaf look large. If you curve it too much, you may lose that uh, bone structure frame framework. That's that's about. It. And I think the the problem with this one is too 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 dark, too dark, too too much contrast. So I can use a dry clean brush. Um, maybe you know you can use a little little bit uh, opaque green or, or opaque yellow, whatever just to blend a little bit, but don't blur it, you know. I know what I'm doing, but if you don't know, you may make it blurry. <laughs> just to blend in a little bit, maybe, maybe it will help. Yeah, just add more one, just keep it light. This is almost just too dark. Dark. Keep it thin and light. So even you paint less um, calligraphic, um, free, but it's not. Yeah, see, this one is faded. It's good. I like that. It's almost not noticeable. But if you look 
closely, you will see it. Go slow when the brush is dry, instead of reloading it, go slow. And uh, this one is subtle, and let me just add some green to it. Let's see. Three main strokes. I think even we have more than three uh, angular points, we only do three main leaves. He, he, that's the way he simplifies things, I think. That's very effective. If you do five, you know, it, it, I try to do to match each tip with the main ring that make it too complicated. So you have to do a deduction to deduct, just do three. Yeah. No matter how many, don't worry about the tip of the, yeah, that I, I got it. I think I, I'm too uh, logical here. <laughs> Yes, you see, if I just do two, three, and then I just, you know, it, it's much easier. Number, the number, play with the three, it's, it's better. So I just do three, now I'm okay to do this one. I use my palm to um, iron it, <laughs> my body temperature to iron it. Okay, now, uh, just, oh, this is, must be more than three, it's so large. It's blurry, but it's okay. I, I want to have some mistakes in this, otherwise it looks too gombi-ish. Okay, and uh, okay. More details on the flower, the pistol, and the uh, bug. <clears throat> Flying bee, or wasp, I think that's it. Okay, just do two dots, and then one long line. And uh, this one even thinner. Oops, too wet. Block. Okay, and uh, for opaque yellow, I have a color which has the opaque in it. You can use white and the yellow, and I use uh, Naples yellow, right? Nep it's a Spanish name. It's a Western color. We got this in in. Um, Maurice new colors along with the, the um, uh, in what is called the uh, ultramarine blue that can uh, uh, yellow ochre yes, yellow ochre is the old one so just use uh, this with a little bit gamboge opaque yellow handy. Okay, then this one is a, a guess, it's a, just a fewer. Well, in my landscape class, someone asked if a, a hosted um, guest uh, concept is too early for Song Dynasty, or, or you know, it's a late development. My, my answer is no. The Song Dynasty is a Confuci new, new Confucius society. Is emphasized on hierarchy. So the monumental landscape is arranged to hierarchy, uh, like an emperor in the center, the subjects, um, the um, uh, court, like court order, you know. Uh, so host and guest is a very, very old concept, starting from Confucius, world, you know, cosmology uh, order. Okay. Host and guest, yeah. It's not that contemporary, it's not a totalitarian uh, regime concept or something uh, modern, you know. No, it's a, it's a traditional value 
for uh, Confucius society, hierarchy society. But you know, in Western painting, they do the same thing with the uh, emphasis on on the main main focus um, and a supporting role, or something like that. You know, that that's a universal aesthetic role. So you cannot make two flowers competing each other. We have two flowers. Uh, try to make one the host, one the guest. Uh, I need to put a little bit more color here just to make it host, right? And guest. Okay. What about uh, um, masters? Is there any masters there? A little, a little bit. Accident, uh, you can use some that's not born. Here, dot, dot. Just adjust a little bit. There's not much bar to see things like that in, the, in this painting. Okay, I'm going to do the part. Let me focus a little bit more. I want to show you this part. Okay. I use this small, uh, small red hair brush. You can use uh, this uh, this brush. This uh, also. <clears throat> so let's do the. I start from the the head, then the body, and then. Uh, I just rotate the paper to easy access. Okay, I use uh, just that little color here. You can add some uh, blue or whatever. It just it could be just black. I think maybe some indigo. That's. The spirit of the artist. Okay. It's a point pointing to the to the host flower. And there's some this is the neck. It has an, a thin um, rest and it's just a break in between the head and the the eye. I don't even use my eye to, to I, you know, use my um, idea and my mind eye. So this is the two legs behind. It's flying. Just a few lines in suggesting that the end of the wing, then I use it. A clean brush with a very very light, very very light uh, gray. Just draw four strokes, one long, one short on each side. One, two. You can maybe use the water a little bit. Two. Oops, just blot it. It should be shorter um, behind. It's okay. I just don't want to make it symmetrical. That's that's the key. Yeah. So one one side longer than the other is fine. Don't have to be. Uh, don't have to wear each stroke lens. But yeah. Just the overall is more important always than the uh, um, and this, the overall size. If you do it too large, like a fly, no one will buy it. Just like a big ant. <laughs> it's almost like that with wings. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to write the poem, Mei Ren Juan Juan Ge Chiu Shui. Beautiful lady across autumn 
model. Oh, I think um, there might be some uh, color here. I forgot to vary this. It's, it's, it's kind of boring to, to have only one pink. Uh, let me just put in some yellow because I I don't want to add any any details than than those two. So just add a little bit glaze. This is glaze after it dries. Even you know before it completely dry, you can also glaze. I just glaze. A little bit on the um, this is glaze very thin layer of uh, wash to to change a uh, um, temperature uh, or hue you know just make it a little bit, little bit um, yellowish can you see it I'm not sure you can, can you can you can use some green I think the artist use some green make it even tender, just like you paint a, a skin, a skin of a lady, you know, you use a little green to the pink, to make it uh, look very tender. I can use a little green there, just to vary a little bit. Okay, so I try to uh, make this poetic with, with uh, uh, blurry, you know, misty feel. That's why we call this um, May, Ren, Jun, 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 just the, um, the gesture of the, the, the lady moves, like, uh, or the ripple of the water, very gentle kind of. Ge means uh, separate. I like his calligraphy a lot. And uh, fun. Just put this extra character in front of his uh, signature. Okay, and uh, my own signature date, Gen Zi Xiao Hui, my Chinese name. Okay, and uh, seal. Okay, that's second painting. Um, if you need a break, you can take a break. Uh, and we'll come back to, uh, to the crepe mat, crepe myrtle. myrtle. Um, I will I'll try to finish this uh, quickly because we already learned everything. Hey, I got some uh, good starting point here. I, I tested this, uh, I mean, I did, I tried to do this demo with the plum, and that's a good starting. I like something like this, <laughs> it's a good start. So I don't have the feel of uh, uh, breaking through, breaking in, right? I always do this. You ready? How's it going with the uh, hibiscus so far? Good. Okay, any comments? Should we do a critique? Should we do another painting? Another painting. Okay. No, critiquing. I think critiquing would be fun. Critiquing would be fun. Um, okay, I can I can stay longer. You if you have some painting ready to be critiqued, uh, you can um, 
Um, I was thinking two ways. One is to share screen. So you can upload it to a computer. Okay. Portia, can you do that? Maybe you can try that. So that way you don't have to send email. I don't have to check my email. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just share screen. Okay, hang on a second. Okay. Yeah, when you're ready, let me know. I will do the critique. Let me share a screen. I like that. Yeah, if you don't know how to do it, you don't have to do it. Uh, I've got a helper here. <laughs> yeah, you have to upload the picture into the computer and then uh, you, you open it and then share screen and you point to the screen, the, the, only the window you want to share. So you got that. She's going to show, hold on. Let me see, Daisy has a question. Sure. This wonderful composition, which is right. The, the, there it the, is. It's a, no, yeah, it said Portia. That's who it was. Portia, you need to select the window. You uh, you open up the, the open the uh, image first, then um, share yeah, share that screen. So not not share okay. this screen. Yeah. Image. Oh, this. No, that doesn't do anything. There. That's her. She's doing it. Okay, Portia. How about if I just, uh, I'm trying to figure out what. Okay, while you figure it out, I will start to, uh, let me see, can you do it one more time? Uh, you got a whiteboard here. You need to open the, the, the image first. Do you, can you see it on your desktop? I was just gonna show it up this way. Oh, uh, okay, I see that. <laughs> See yeah, then people have to uh, ping your video. Okay, I see that. Um, yeah, I, I thought the, the, let me see the leaves. Do you separate the two sides? So oh, I can see that, yeah. The darker side on top could be more, a little stronger. The light on the bottom is uh, about the right. Yeah, the, the darker one could be a little uh, darker. Let's... So I haven't done the veins yet, but I'm... So, yeah, that, that will make it uh, stand out. Yeah. So basically, this contrast could be stronger. Yeah. If you look at uh, the original, you will see the, the value contrast could be stronger. Yeah. You can also contrast by the uh, color. Um, yeah. So I was struggling a little bit with the blending of the white and the yellow for the petal. Um, so that part, yeah. That, okay. I don't see any serious problem. The, the little pedal on the right is, is almost uh, correct. Yeah, just to eliminate strokes by wet the paper first. You can do it uh, with water first. So then, you, yeah, you, you do it to one, one pedal at a time. So uh, before it gets dry, yeah. you should you get it even. Uh, oh, yeah. I think <laughs> because the paper, the, the paper yeah. dries before you try to blend it. That's the problem. So uh, yeah. I'll do some demo to show you here. Yeah. If you look at uh, my ready. demo, you should see no, more me. idea what uh, this how this works. Where her page is up there and you're down there. Oh. Okay, can uh, you can you can keep uh, paying my video while others talk, so you don't have to um, see the conversation uh, with individuals, other individuals. You you can keep paying my video. Uh, so watch me doing while we talk to other students, uh, participants, okay? So it will not be um, interrupted. Okay, Portia, yeah, if you have other painting, you can show it if you would like. Uh, that's fine, I'm done, thank you. Thank you. I think good job uh, to start with. It, it's your first time, right? It, it, it takes a while. For me, it takes uh, uh, 30 years. <laughs> Still learning. Um, so um, yeah, you can you can wet the paper. You can even spray a little bit. <laughs> I'll spray a little bit, just like a drizzle. You know, I don't really create a wet paper. I, I create create some uh, some uh, spot, some like a raindrops. So when I dot, I can easily get this kind of uh, feel, right? And this is, uh, this, uh, uh, yeah. So partially wet the paper should work. And uh, if you look at uh, the, 
the flowers in, in on the street, you know, they're, they're still uh, around this space. You see, if you look at it from distance, you don't see anything but uh, the cluster shape, you know, it's like this, this shape. But if you uh, look closely, you will see the individual flowers uh, look like, a, you know, uh, six, I think, uh, petals. Um, and then the, the uh, uh, even the, the, those uh, statements and that kind of details. So I, I, I think this time I concentrate on the whole, I try to create my own style now. I, I did some, you know, study, many studies like that, including yesterday's, I started to get some, some confidence to, to do my own. So basically I use uh, the watercolor, um, if watercolor concept maybe a little more. So I, I negative painting some of the, the flowers, you know, like here, you can you can see a center. I, I leave some white for stamen, and uh, the the petals are highly you know wrinkled, so you don't really recognize each petals. Some artists do that, um, but I don't think it gets the spirit of that this flower. So this is the the, the main group. I think you can do something like that. And then I'll drop some drips, uh, some uh, uh, white. The white is kind of cold, you know. If, if you look at it here, I will use some yellow, it's, uh, some yellow and some white, and then dilute it into a cream, milk consistency, and then I do the dripping. Ah, beautiful! Can you see it? I wanted to see what's happening. Can you see that? See that magic? See? Yeah, that's what I want. Wow, I just kind of expand. Expand like that. Oh, beautiful. You, you see the, 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 the that uh, looks good. Yeah, exciting, huh? Yeah, easy, huh? Yeah, that's the easy, the fun part of this. You didn't get that, I'm sorry, in the beginning, but that's a very fundamental thing you, I need to teach you before you, you, you can do this, yeah. So basically, this is it. Um, just, just like uh, creating uh, channels with dry brush and then uh, one color, whatever it is, you know, pink, purple, whatever. Don't wear it, don't add any, any white to that. And then add this, just like we did with uh, the, the leaves, the other th things on the hibiscus, uh, right? This is the fun part of this painting. You can see the, the, the material just to do the things by itself. And uh, uh, so I, I will do another minor group. So this is uh, one to open and then we close we call it closing to balance it right so we, we we have some communication between the two so you need to have the one that continue this uh, and then you get uh, pointing to the sky and uh, just to create in the middle of the flower it's like a wind me wind meal kind of shape um, uh, it it has a center and then with a stems to hold long stem to hold each petal. If you look at the flowers, I don't want to really get into that uh, uh, botanic uh, thing. Normally we do the study of that uh, before we do flowers. But the, today we just concentrate on the fun of it. Yeah, just, yeah, it's okay to create your own species. Yeah. Okay, so one flower identical is okay, just the blurry thing. And then I just add, um, I think normally this should be on the top. If, if you look, if you see from the stand, uh, you know, like a Western point of view, the, the, the highlight is on the uh, upper side, maybe. But it doesn't matter. We just, we just do this. <laughs> so uh, the next uh, thing is uh, 
I'll go with the stem. You can do the leaves, but the, you don't know where the leaf grow from, right? If I don't do the stems. So uh, even the bud, it should uh, have some stems. I already did some kind of bud. Uh, they are half bloom. The bud is a, a green color. So I, I'll just use a, a small liner, stiff uh, gombi liner or something, uh, and use some uh, some uh, uh, some brown. I think the characteristic of this tree is the white slit and very uh, very very smooth bark less skin, right? That's that's a very interesting thing. So we want to keep that in mind. So we don't uh, make it uh, too dark. <clears throat> Remember the Cantonese school like to start from uh, from the tip to the to the bottom. So I just hold the brush straight and you just go like that and uh, I, I, I can add, uh, start the branch at this position. I numbered them. This is the number two position, number one, number two. Not in the uh, center, I mean, not in the corner, right? So this is the uh, number two position, uh, almost, it's okay. And then another branch to the front. This one I did, to, uh, the opposite way I pushed it, it's okay. Now I, I do uh, dragging again and then just add some ink to it. And then, yeah, this time I remember to do this before it gets dry. So I, I can start uh, dripping some uh, mineral green colors to, to this, but stay within the line. Okay, it's kind of hard for me to do this. Um, sometimes, okay, in the beginning, before it gets split, it might be, you know, look like a dot. And then you can just use some water, additional water to drain it. So you charge it and then you have to be careful not to go outside the, the stroke and then put the water in the middle of the stroke very, very wet brush, almost like dripping. I don't really touch the, it's the water touch the, the paper, not to bristle even, you know, I feel just like dripping in, yeah, dripping. dripping. I can, you can drip dark also. Okay, then I, I alternate this two, I add more uh, branches. I make a cross like that. And here, all the way to this. And uh, they start from the same root, could, you know, could be like that. And I make some crossing. It's all random. Um, just uh, feel free to create your own composition. But basically, you have horizontal and vertical elements, uh, diagonal elements. Uh, that's yeah, that's the the idea. Okay, and leave some space for flowers. And I I have a I didn't leave a brick, I wish I had. So I have to avoid this, I just go behind uh, like that, uh, or something like that. Or you, can, you can make a little branch there and then uh, some branch on the, this side, one long, one short. Always go with one long, one short, it helps. Okay, and uh, this one, um, you, you, <clears throat> you make a, um, this is a branch hanging down. So this, oops, and this is a little too long. Let me, let me make it into a leaf before it gets too, so just make it into a leaf. And on that paper, is that paper? Okay. <laughs> Let me mute you guys so you can talk privately. Okay. <clears throat> I just hide, uh, hide a mistake that, that stem is too long and just make it into a. So now we're working on the uh, uh, 
leaves. You can you can do light leaves first, the back side first, and uh, we use uh, some kind of a brown, green, yellow, yellow, brown, green, and red, something like that. Okay, so just uh, I I can try. Oh, this one this is a tender leaf. Just see how I do this is strokes. Um, just the uh, very calligraphic. Yeah, something like that. And you can charge it with other color to change the colors of it. Now I uh, add a few. This this could be the same color for the um, but the bud is like a little round. So to make it easy, you can point the, uh, the brush to the bottom of the bud and then do a circle, little circle to get. It's easier than you put the brush tip up. So just, yeah, just do it like a, a cross, cross, crosswise. Um, you can put some, because this, Flower, it has a lot of holes uh, you can see through. So you can put some brown in, in between, in between the, the petals. The key is to make uh, all of this uh, in similar, similar value, the darkness. In, in Western term, they call it value. So with, with the variations of uh, brown, green, um, yellow, you know, pink, uh, some uh, only the the highlight in, in white. The all the other parts is about the same darkness, so not not much contrast needed. So I just dot this um, around the edge. Just look at the outer shape. That's what I, I'm worried about. And leave some uh, space between sections. Don't put the uh, uh, the but all all the way. It's only those uh, the head of the the branches or the you know the, the front. It has to do with movement again. It it has to do with the direction of the the branch, the growing direction of the. Okay, now we can add a little um, darkly. I mean light leaves like that. In life, they come in um, along the long stem. So it almost like, a, uh, you know, just too very boring kind of, but in painting, we try to make it uh, more, a little bit more interesting. So uh, I will still paint along the line, but we try to hide the line. So that, that kind of line, that, that's a line. That kind of thing. So we just put uh, things along this edge too. Okay. Then you put some more flowers. But this time we just do it uh, loosely. If you want uh, to paint, you know, loosely, you don't want to paint all the elements like this. But here is what you paint loosely. Okay. So you just, just very dry brush, you know, and then um, some splatter, you know, something like that. Just, you can do splatters, yellow splatters starting to play. Oh, I like yellow. So just, yeah, now um, time for yellow. Okay, in the center. Anyway, it could be pollens. They have yellow in the center area. And you can go out, you can just impression, impressionistic. You know, just put the yellow, just make it a nice, pretty. That's it. <laughs> okay, now um, keep continue, continue with this, uh, this, uh, this back leaf. And, uh, you know, just make if you want to paint realistic, it's almost like this, just a cast of uh, leaves. <clears throat> so kind of like that. So then they change the 
uh, I have dark here. I don't have to do the turn over leaves, but this time we just do the contrast. How about that? So we just add some indigo into the ink and do the dark leaves against the light. You don't have to be the same leaf, but just the contrast and create some spirit. It's a little bit too dark. Maybe, oh, I like oh, what you do when it's too dark, add water. You like add water or you can blot it. Don't blot it. I try to add water first. I think that will solve it to make it a little uh, softer. So uh, this part is uh, uh, the end of this kind of like this is this part. So it, it's a group of uh, strokes. You can, it's like four strokes like that. And then you connect them with some stamps. You can add a few little, little ones like this and uh, just add to make it easy, you know, that's how easy it is. It's, it looks like very, very like the the uh, flower. This flower is quicker, quick meter, murder. Okay. Yeah, I want to have that the darkest part. Maybe that's a focus uh, point area. Uh, so the other other part is not uh, necessary. Okay, and you can have something to, to foil out the contrast. The oops. Yeah, see that nice. Um, nice uh, effect of uh, Kalashikomi here. That's how it is. Sometimes it just takes time. So if you do that in procedure, in process correctly, trust yourself, leave it alone, it will do the work for you. If you try to create this exactly before your eyes, that is impossible sometimes. It takes time, it takes 20 minutes sometimes. You just, you know, go, go, go do something else and you let it um, take, it, uh, take the, Get the work done over time so that's how we do it okay and uh, some stamps on top but actually you know you don't have to do all the uh, the uh atonemic, what is it botanic uh, parts so, but uh, just to bring them together is, is the key i think you don't have to Add the stems if, if it's already structured, but if it's not connected, you can do that. And I, I'm not adding the split on the in the front of the, the petals. It, it should be like uh, something like this if you enlarge it, you know, but uh, it should have a split like the X. Actually, it has six, but uh, we, we only do an X would be fine in painting. It's just Little X, little X, or you know, a V, an upside down V sometimes. Suggesting the, or you can just put a dot, like a, like a, the end of a blueberry. It's, it's okay. Okay, um, so just accenting it, and we call it. Um, let's see if I need a little more on this one because we want to to make it to, to look like the there's a potential of a, of a more flowers. So this one goes on top and with more petals even. And you just drop drop drip some. Some green to it. I just add some green lines to it. Let's see. I need to use the, a different tone to add. Add a, uh, instead of different value, you can add green to uh, yellow, and uh, you can add fine to this kind of strokes. So.
I just add indigo to this. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, I think if you look at the whole picture instead of the little little things, you would have more chance to uh, enjoy this Mokri style. So it's a really free style, but a Gumbi style as well. So, yeah, I have an artist named this, uh, uh, what is the name? Um, Stone Bridge, Shi Chao. He does very loose uh, qi uh, on this kind of uh, paper also, but he, 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 he does not paint so detailed. He, the same technique, you know, same technique, Gumbi style. So I'm, I'm dotting this uh, um, mustache uh, just to finish it. Um, yeah, I think this part really look like that chiquillo with this kind of bark, uh, in this kind of shiny, uh, shiny surface. I really like that. That's it. Oh, do I have a bark there? Yeah, it's a green one. Um, I can do a pre mantis. I have a live model. Victoria, can you bring that to me? I have to run to my kitchen. We got the, uh, let me tell you this story. Sorry, my head. Sorry, my head. Okay, sorry about the interruption. Okay, here, here is uh, my model. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he was. It was uh, uh, too hot. I think he he dropped on the on the ground from the schedule. So we 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 took it home. We tried to feed him, but uh, I think he's too sick. Uh, sorry. Anyway, I'm going to paint uh, on this. Uh, Looking into the sky, into the sky, I think. So. Okay. Let's go add some red to the green to do the 
Next. Okay. And then the the weapon. Okay, now use the, you, you can use a, a whisker brush if you have to do the antenna. I use this small whisker brush, just uh, with ink and uh, a little bit. Antenna. Okay, and then I vary the color a little bit. Yes, uh, some red. This is big. That's oh, too big. The hair is big. Not like a Lee with cute um, paramedic. Look at his paramedic in the book. Um, if you have downloaded the book, um, you can find many references um, from the, the book. And uh, for those of you who ask me about uh, the name translation of those flowers, you can. Uh, Check the bookmark. Let me show you how to do that. Um, let me see, where do I find that? Okay, here we go. Can you see this? Okay, here's the uh, the book, right? Look at this uh, um, this bookmark here, and it has index, almost like it's like a uh, index page. So if you click on Jasmine, you will. Uh, where's it go? You should see Jasmine. I think the window is closed. Okay, here we go. Hey, what? Uh, I'm not familiar with the. Okay, here we go. Uh, I have to adjust this. Okay, so you can see how I. Yeah, so if you click on this uh, this name, a puppy is a cotton rose hibiscus. Yeah, that's cotton rose hibiscus. That's what we did today, right? This one, um, I did earlier, right? Cotton rose hibiscus. Okay, so this is China red bud. What's that? Uh, flower, the purple daisies, 
evergreen magnolia. Evergreen magnolia is what we did today. Okay, so you can download this book um, from Blue Heron Arts, an ebook. If you haven't, um, let me go back to the cons. Let's minimize this. I can see. So I'm going to finish this uh, painting here. Um, you can add little branches. In, you know, like, there's no end you, what you could do an opinion. No when to stop is the uh, um, most difficult part. So just stop. And I can write here chu yen or yen chu. Either way is fine. Means a colorful autumn. I think the original is Yan uh, Chu. My Chinese friends suggested me to reverse the order. Uh, so I, I, he, he's the editor of the encyclopedia. I trust him. But I think grammar, grammatically, both are fine. So. Chiu Yan means the autumn color, the autumn color. Yeah, autumn co color. Okay. And uh, I don't have room for all the, I just put my name. This is more of a original painting I consider. I really didn't try, uh, trace the original. I, I put my own reference and the, the buck, if I not me when I hand it. Okay. So this is uh, my name. To, uh, and now I'll do this. Uh, seal on this, uh, on this side, maybe. Sure, it's correct. You can put it on this side. Okay, okay that's the end of this uh, class. Um, I have a question. We open discussion for you. If you are interested in continue to learn uh, flowers and birds in Moku style or other style um, of the same uh, kind of subject. I can do, um, say, creep uh, myrtle in, uh, not gong bi, maybe, you know, both uh, xie yi on si unsized paper or um, size, uh, sized paper in Moku, maybe two styles for each uh, subject matter. Uh, I can make this into a series of class. If you want to do it bi-weekly, weekly, or monthly, you can write, uh, maybe you can discuss among yourselves, but I, I would also like to, you know, design the class based on some uh, request you may already uh, interest in for the, you know, the schedule. I think we can do it uh, right after Victoria's class like this maybe we can just shorten it to two hours and uh, you know just do one or two instead of three I, I i intended to do critique but i didn't figure out the best way to to send the images to me because in in my other watercolor class they send to teachers uh, personal uh, email um and it takes a long time to to do every one of them 
I, I would like to see what you do and I give you a general critique. Um, you can just hold up what uh, you, you can show me now if you want, let me see. Yeah, if you have work to show me, please. Okay, great. Uh, Marion, let me see. Uh, I always... uh -huh. And let me enlarge everybody's. So, uh, okay, I see Clifford Brown, okay, the Magnolia, Marion Link. Uh, okay, I see. The flowers uh, where we did. Okay, it lo looked like the the flower behind me. Actually, the hydrangea you did. Uh, the shape of the the cluster looked more rounded. Um, Daisy, I see your magnolia. Great. Oh, you have a good start, Portia. This time, I like the looseness. <laughs> Thank you. Time. Very good. You're getting loose. <laughs> Imagine you you did that. Okay. Oh, that's a beautiful one. Charling. How do I get it? Yeah, very dear copy. I love the two sides, the turnover leaves. Mm -hmm. I can see even from the small picture. You see. Yeah. Uh, it's Kirby. not finished. It's not finished. Okay, I understand. Lisa, thank you for uh, asking me to do this. I see mm -hmm. what the, the circle you have. You, you need a larger brush. Oh, okay. Okay. You yeah, understand what I mean? Yeah, too small. It's more like a maple, not this this cotton rose. You check the cotton rose with a hibiscus, and you will see how large that is. It's like a cotton plant, I think that's the way it's like named. It's a it's a big uh, big uh, leaf. Uh, so it just makes the leaf bigger. I think the flower looks nice. Yeah, the leaf could be bigger. Yeah. Bigger. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think uh, if you review the recording and the practice, uh, you you see my point. Yeah, I think you you get it. If you if you you can even do a design of those complicated leaves. Oh, that's a beautiful piece. Yeah. So your your magnolia turned out pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that uh, that's a good uh, good one. Is that? Okay. Any anybody else? Um, if, yeah, if I don't see you, maybe you're on another screen. Uh, you have to speak to ask my question. Uh, you, 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 you will be, let me see if I, I, I have to MP myself so the speaker will pop up. Okay, I think uh, Lisa, you have another piece uh, we just did. Well, you are, yeah, this composition I like, this shape of the gesture of the tree, you know, is, is looking very unlike the real. Plant, that's very good. Yeah, okay. I, I like the grouping you have, the three, uh, the large, medium, small. I didn't mention that, but you did it very nicely. The three, three okay. groups. Yeah, you don't have to do the bug. <laughs> you already got it. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, just open your speaker when you show the pictures and try to talk, so your your picture will pop. I'm not sure if I can get everybody on the same screen. All right. Yeah, I think I, I got everybody. Yeah. So Darcy, in, uh, yeah, I, I see your flower uh, a little bit too dark, too colorful, but the leaves are very good, especially the small group on the right side. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, perfect uh, turning over. Leaves. Okay. Join. Joanne, uh, Joanne, yeah, you have a very colorful start of the the flowers. I wish it, uh, the white can break more the pink so they don't separate uh, that much. So just uh, do it at the same time as before the uh, the pink sets. Break the breaking the the pink more with the white. Yeah. I think it looks it looks nice. The, the composition is nice. But uh, yeah, just more white. You can dampen the, the, the if it's dried already, you can do more. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, do I get everybody's? Uh, okay, Marilyn, you want more a critique on, the, on this piece? Because your, your image can only show part of it. Maybe hold back a little bit to let me see the whole thing. 
Yeah, hold back. Oh. Okay, now I can see it. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me enlarge it. Let me pin your video. Oh, I see it. It's like a hydrangea, like I mentioned. You see the picture behind me? Let me show you later. Um, yeah, the for for the um, crepe mel melter, melter, you have to uh, group them more like integral part of the, uh, this looks nice. I like the color variations very much. If it's uh, um, wisteria, I mean, hydrangea, it looks very, very good, but just for the characteristic of the um, crepe mer myrtle, you have to uh, make them into more uh, integral cluster. But yeah, it, it is nice. It is nice. The white, I think you're on uh, absorbent paper, so you can you can load the white uh, with the pink together. So you, you do it in a brush instead of on the paper. Yeah. When when you get the size paper, try this technique, the dripping in technique. But uh, if you do this on regular paper, you can blend the the uh, water white and then pink and just do it. Uh, like a, on a brush. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Exit. Be on this side. <laughs> Let me see anybody else. Let me pin my own video. Uh, oh, thank you. Which side did you pin on? Okay. Uh, so yeah. if I if I offer this class for the next week, how many of you are interested in? Anybody? Yeah. If I repeat, uh, not repeat, continue this class with different uh, flowers each time, would, would be interested in to make the class. Anyway, I, okay, great, okay. So, um, yeah, if this is a good time, I will try to uh, coordinate with Victoria. So uh, she has to end the class on time so we can start this class right after. If it's not too long for some of you taking the calligraphy class. You can, you can actually monitor her, uh, her class on YouTube. As soon as she finishes, we'll start this class like we did today. Shouldn't be any problem on Tuesday. Um, so if, yeah. Um, Clifford, do you have any comments? It's nice to see you. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, uh, Henry, I did have one comment on Tara Scomi. Are certain pigments better for dripping than others? I was thinking like the opaques, are, that is the mineral colors are better for dripping yes. because they float on the top yeah, yeah. rather than yeah. sink in. The, the color we use usually is the mineral. If you look at my, my piece here, water and the mineral green on the branches. That works pretty well. I use water, maybe a little bit uh, um, white in the brush. That on, on, on ink, you can see I made the dark into the light on this on this part. It works beautifully. So basically, the principle is you use uh, a medium grade ink or color, monochrome, you know, uh, monochrome or you know, without the gradation, just the, uh, for the shape, the form. Then uh, immediately dropping some uh, color, like a you know, dotting, uh, dapping, no, not not a draw, not not paint, and then you can you can add more water if it doesn't move, uh, without stirring too much, interfere too much. Let us you know do the work. It it takes some time to 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 push the dark to the sides. You won't see that effect, but in the end. Uh, you'll see the hard edge, the seam line around the stain. The stain. Yeah. Okay. It just takes some uh, practice and they get, uh, you know, um, timing correct. And then, um, did you try the Martin's uh, white today? Dr. Martin's white? Yeah, I was time? using the, the, the PH Martin's white there. PH Martin's or... white. It works for you? Yeah, uh -huh. it, 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 it's much more of a floater than a mixer, so it, it, it'll stay on the top. Oh, stay on top. Yeah, you have to right. dilute it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Actually, you have to kind of bring it back to life because it turns into like a crystalline form oh, here on the bottom. Yeah, too, 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 too blocky, too, too opaque. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. 
you have, have to, to dilute it for like a, a day before class to, to bring it back to life. Don't use that. Just use regular Chinese white or you know the uh, gouache. Uh, I use the uh, I'll use the gouache, the titanium, titanium white, like in, in gouache. Uh, if you use a lot of them, you can get the Chinese white from our store. Um, uh, your, your competitor, uh, Ning Yi, recommends the Sakura white as a mixing white as opposed to the PH Martin, but maybe he just has a lot of these he wants to sell. That's all. So who knows? <laughs> I, I, I have no comments on I, I'm not familiar with that. Um, yeah, some, sometimes we use the poster white, it's a gouache, basically gouache. I, yeah, uh, some watercolor is to use the uh, um, the uh, gesso. It, it's water based to gesso. It's not water so I think the the key is the consistency of that. You, you have to uh, and also I you know like today I use the opaque yellow, which is that Naples yellow, right? Um, with uh, some white, so that will warm it up. Uh, you can also use the uh, uh, the third grade, the pale, the palest grade of uh, mineral green instead of uh, white uh, on the on the branches. That, you don't have to use. Sometimes, in many cases, water just do the trick. A little bit white, a lot of water, maybe. But my my what my white tends to be more than the original. I think, but you know, it's contemporary taste. Maybe we like that, but uh, in the in the content, I mean, in the original, and the, you cannot even tell it's white. It could be just water, a little bit uh, color, you know, a little bit white. Maybe. So now, Henry, I had a question about uh, uh, Marie's watercolors. Has their quality gotten better, or are they still pretty bad? It's, I mean, the tubes break; it gets all over my fingers. I mean, <laughs> the paint isn't bad, but it. it yeah, it, I, I know that. that yeah, I, I, I think it's the best is just to put it in, in those uh, pieces, you know, just open the, the, the tube, just put it in, that's how you use it. Uh, yeah, you can get a set of uh, dishes, some of the, uh, stacking dishes like this. Yeah, that, that's how we do it too. Uh, you, you, I have a, um, I have a, a lot of dried, uh, you know, on, on shelf ones. I, I just use the, uh, like uh, this plastic ones, I put all of them. In. I put a little sponge. It they don't smell bad. It's it's good smell, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. They don't seem sticky. I I just put a some uh, sponge with uh, uh, color. In, in this case, I can I just recycle them. I have got too many of these. But uh, like you know, for demo purposes, uh, yeah, it, it's better just can't get rid of fresh it. squeeze. You know. Oh, well, just for fun. Okay. Well, Henry, I do know that some other manufacturers, I've had their tubes are like 20 years old and the colors are still good and squeeze out. So there's something with the Marie's, it's, it's just a cheaper I think packaging the process. Gelatin, yeah, the gelatin tends to do that. Um, the other manufacturers, they might use alternative binding material. Like uh, we have Sakura, they both do that. Uh, their, their color will not uh, uh, have a much longer shelf life uh, than my race. So it's a selling point for them. But uh, the if the color uh, intensity is not vibrancy, maybe sacrifice. Uh, I think yeah. I think maybe you know, my race has the best vibrancy. We still and also water resist uh, after it dries. You want to bleed when you revet it. No, I, I use a lot of uh, watercolor these days because I use dry mounting with the silicone paper. So I don't worry about the bleeding. I use watercolor, uh, Hobang watercolor. Yeah. And I, I think the traditional uh, ink uh, chips are still the best if you, if you like to just have this three at least. We have all the other colors like uh, Vermilion, uh, rouge, uh, peony red, that kind of thing. Uh, all, all the uh, the powders for the greens. 
but it's a little troublesome. You have to kind of grind it with the, these uh, fingers to prepare it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions and uh, comments? I'm very glad to see you, my old friends. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, if you need to go, please go ahead. If you have further questions, mm -hmm. just stay longer. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Henry. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, you, I will yeah. open the discussion page on my website after this. You can post mm -hmm. your press practice there at uh, ChinesebrushPainting.ning.com. Uh, I'll send you an email. To that site okay you're Thank welcome you. to join you, you you if you join subscribe to that site you have access to all the recordings uh, of my previous uh, class on dvds and on zoom so it's a whole lot of uh, a sea of uh, information there yeah okay thanks uh, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you thank you thank you bye 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 Bye. Bye bye, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, <laughs> bye, -bye. Uh, bye, -bye. Uh, Marilyn. Okay. Marilyn says bye. See you in other class. Yeah. See you in, in other class. Okay. okay. I'm going to end the class now. Okay. <laughs>